Chapter 27, Vital Signs. Attention towards a patient's immediate health should be the first priority of every health care provider. By taking a patient's vital signs on a routine basis prior to dental treatment, the dental team is confirming that the patient's health status is at a level of well-being. Vital signs consist of taking and recording a person's temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. It's kind of like if you were going to the regular medical office. They, they, take your, they take your temperature, they take your pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. Some factors that can affect vital sign readings are emotional factors like stress or fear. So if you're going to the dental office, a lot of people are scared of the dentist. So they'll be stressed, they're scared, so that can affect their vital sign readings. And some physical factors are illness, drinking or eating, or exercise. So you will get patients that are diabetic. So therefore, if they've been at an appointment for a long time, well, let's see, let's say that they're at a 9 or 10 a.m. appointment and they haven't had any breakfast, their, their blood pressure will drop um, because their sugar is dropping, so they'll start to feel ill. Temperature. The degree of the hotness or coldness of the body's internal environment. Metabolism, the process of physical and chemical changes that takes place in the production of the body's heat. During an illness, a person's metabolism increases for the purpose of elevating the body's temperature. Most bacteria and viruses cannot survive in excess heat, and this is the body's way of defending against such diseases. So what they mean is when you have a fever, it's because your body is fighting bacteria or viruses. So by elevating the amount of, um, I mean, your body temperature, it's going to start killing some of the bacteria. Temperature readings. So we use a thermometer, and this is the instrument used to measure body temperature. Temperature readings are calibrated according to the Fahrenheit or the Celsius scale. Here in the United States, of course, we use the Fahrenheit. The average range of oral temperature of a resting person is 97.6 to 99 Fahrenheit. So this is considered normal temperature. Some people will have a lower temperature. Some people will have a, low, um, a higher temperature. Usually normal is about a 98.6. The average body temperature is higher in infants and younger children than in adults. Types of thermometers. There's digital thermometers. They're battery operated. A timing system shows a digital reading after 30 seconds. So basically you turn it on, you put it on, and then you go, um, and then it's gonna give you a, a reading and it's gonna beep. So a tympanic a thermometer is, an infrared signal is bounced off the eardrum and an accurate reading is provided within two seconds. Usually you'll see this a lot in uh, pediatric offices like medical offices, they check the temperature using um, inside the children's ears. A temporal scanner, uh, this uses the surface temperature of artery of your forehead. So a lot of people now are using these type of thermometers, which, so you don't have to put it in your mouth, it's, it's more um, hygienic. Basically what they do is they just run it across your forehead and your, um, your temples, and this will give you uh, a reading of your body temperature. And then there's the old school, which is a glass thermometer, and many states have banned the use of mercury thermometers because of health hazards. So that's like the old school glass thermometers that I used to see before, you used to um, put it under your tongue. It was a glass little tube, and it had mercury inside, and then the mercury would rise according to your body temperature. And of course, like they said, this is banned because if you drop one of these, um, the mercury is dangerous to pick to clean up. So the pulse, the pulse is the rhythmic expansion of an artery each time the heart beats. The pulse may be taken at various sites. The radial artery is in the inner surface of the wrist. The brachial artery is in the inner fold of the upper arm. So that's usually where they put the uh, blood pressure cuff in the inner fold of the arm and the carotid artery, which is alongside the larynx. So that'll be on the, kind of on the side, but on the front of your neck.
pulse characteristics, the rate, the number of beats that occurs during the counting period, rhythm, patterns, pattern of the beats, such as an occasional skipping, speeding up, or slowing down of a beat, and the volume is the force of the beat, such as a strong or a weak beat. Pulse reading. Make sure the patient is positioned with his or her arm at the same level or lower than the heart. The arm should be well supported and extended straight out. Also keep in mind when you take pulse, the patient's feet should not be, uh, their legs should not be crossed. Both feet should be um, firmly on the floor. Normal pulse rate in resting adults is 60 to 100 beats per minute. In a child, it's 70 to 100 beats per minute. A child's heart is always going to have a much faster uh, beat than an adult's. Um, that's why sometimes the children, when you when you touch them on their chest, you feel like their heart is about to pop out of their chest. It's not because they've been running around or anything like that. It's just that their 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 heartbeat is normally much quicker, much faster than a normal adult. It is difficult to detect any possibly any possible arrhythmia or irregularity in the heartbeat in times shorter than 30 seconds. Respiration is the process of inhaling and exhaling or breathing. Respiration characteristics, the rate, which is the total number of breath, breaths per minute, rhythm, which is the breathing pattern, and the depth, the amount of air inhaled and exhaled. Respiration readings in an adult is 10 to 20 breaths per minute. Children and teenagers are usually 18 to 30 breaths per minute. Blood pressure. Blood pressure reflects the amount of work in the heart. The heart has to do to pump blood through the body. Two pressures of the heart. So the systolic reflects the amount of pressure it takes for the left ventricle of the heart to compress or push oxygenated blood out into the blood vessels. Diastolic is the heart muscle at rest when it is allowing the heart to take in blood to be oxygenated before the next contraction. So next we're going to talk about blood pressure equipment. The equipment used when taking a patient's blood pressure is the sphygmomanometer and the stethoscope. The sphygmomanometer includes the blood pressure cuff and meter. The cuff is a cloth wrapped that holds an inflatable rubber bladder. A rubber bulb is attached to the cuff with rubber tubing. So these are like the old school uh, blood pressure cuffs. Uh, a lot of people now are using the digital one where they just put the cuff on your arm and the machine takes it automatically. To get an accurate reading, it is important to use the ap appropriately sized cuff. The arm circumference between eight to, to 10 inches is a small adult cuff. The arm circumference 10 and a half to 13 inches is the regular adult cuff. If the arm circumference is 13 and a half to 17 inches, you use the large adult cuff and the arm circumference 17 and a half to 20 inches in an adult thigh cuff. So the stethoscope is used to amplify car cough sounds. So the stethoscope is what the doctors use around their neck to listen to your heartbeat. A series of sounds, blood rush, laps by the pressure. As the pressure in the cuff is slowly released, uh, the stethoscope picks up a distinct thumping sound that grows louder and then soft softens to a murmur. Five phases of car cough sounds occur during the deflation of the blood pressure cuff. An automated electronic blood pressure device is used in many practices today to simplify and speed the taking of the blood pressure. And this is the one that I said that it's, they just put um, the cuff on the arm and then the machine takes the blood pressure by itself. Wrist blood pressure monitors can be accurate if used exactly as directed. And these are the ones that are, uh, it's like a wristband and it has like a little digital, I wanna say it's like a clock, but a little digital display on them and you just put it on the wrist and that'll take your the blood pressure. These devices are extremely sensitive to body position. The arm and the wrist must be at heart level with the patient quiet and still. 
A situation may arise in which it is necessary to take several pressure readings to obtain an accurate or average reading. If this occurs, allow the deflated blood pressure cuff to remain on the patient for a minimum of 10 minutes before you obtain another reading. If taken too soon, the reading may be incorrect. Some medical considerations. The stress and anxiety of a dental procedure could possibly elevate a patient's blood pressure. Many drugs have adverse effects that can interfere with dental treatment. A patient who has been diagnosed with hypertension, which is uh, high blood pressure, should be under the care of a physician during a treatment regimen. Usually people who have high blood pressure are always taking blood pressure medicine, and you need to know these things for those type of patients when they show into the office. Advanced monitoring procedures. Additional patient monitoring techniques are being introduced into dental surgical procedures as a standard of monitoring a patient's health status in a non-invasive way. Monitoring patients during the pre-operative, operative, and post-operative phases can occur as an expanded function once the certified dental assistant has completed a board-approved course in these procedures. Pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry is used for measuring the concentration of oxygen in the blood. This procedure is of particular importance for monitoring oxygenation and pulse rate throughout anesthesia and during recovery phase. And basically this applies for or uh, applies to oral surgeons. If you're going to work with an oral surgeon, usually they have already a, a certified nurse that they work with and the nurse will be the one monitoring. Um, monitoring the machine and the patient's respiration and their blood pressure and the um, amount of oxygen in the blood. The pulse oximeter works by passing a beam of red and infrared light through a pulsating capillary bed. Oxygenated blood is bright red and deoxygenated blood is more blue purple. The, ox the ox oximeter detects the pulse and then subtracts the intensity of color detected when the pulse is absent. The remaining intensity of color represents only oxygenated red blood. A fit, healthy person should have an oxygen saturation level between 95% and 99%. So now let's talk about an electrocardiogram or an ECG a procedure that measures, measures the electrical activity of the heartbeat. In dentistry, the ECG can be used as a preventative measure when a patient is undergoing general anesthesia or IV sedation in a hospital or outpatient setting. And like I said, this generally applies to oral surgeons when they do sedations uh, for patients uh, when they're going to do, um, when they're having extractions done. The chest leads are placed on the patient at specific locations. The machine then amplifies the natural electric electrical currents generated by the electrical impulses of the heart and the pattern is traced on graph paper. With each beat, an electrical impulse or wave travels through the heart. The ECG records a series of waves that move above or below a baseline value. This wave causes the muscle to squeeze and pump blood through the heart. Each deflection corresponds to a particular part of the cardiac uh, cycle. So, Arrhythmias. There's a few of them. So a sinus arrhythmia is the rate or is when the rate or the rhythm is uh, of the heartbeat is altered. Atrial arrhythmia is when the atria contracts before the next cardiac cycle. And most of the time, this is more, more most common to see with patients who smoke or consumes a large amount of caffeine. Atrial flutter. The atria is beating at an extremely rapid rate, and an example of this would be up to 300 beats per minute. This can be reversed with medication to slow the heart. Ventricular arrhythmia. The ventricles contract before the next cardiac cycle. Uh, it, this is commonly seen when a patient uses tobacco, alcohol, or medications containing epinephrine, and occasionally with dealing with anxiety. 
ventricular tachycardia. The ventricles are beating at an extremely fast rate. The patient's heart rate will be between 101 and 250 beats per minute. This can become life-threatening if not reversed with drugs or when you use a defibrillator. Ventricular fibrillation, total electrical dysfunction. The patient is unresponsive with no pulse and is not breathing, so the patient will require a, defib a defibrillator, and the defibrillator is that machine that um, gives electric shock to the person's heart that it's placed on the chest. It gives electric shock to the heart to bring it back. And then an, a, a, a systole is no heartbeat. So the result of no heartbeat or a flat line. Patient education. It is estimated that 50 million Americans have high blood pressure. Approximately one fourth of that population is not aware of their medical condition. By taking a patient's blood pressure at every visit, not only are you gathering vital information for the patient's treatment that day, but you may also be saving that person's life.